All right, this is me reviewing the Xiaomi Mi Pad 5. So this um, Xiaomi Mi Pad 5 has been in my possession for the past two weeks now, right? I haven't actually used it as my daily driver because I simply can't use a tablet to do what I need to do on a daily basis and that's okay. But the thing is, I got to review it and I put it through the paces that a normal person would put it through. So a normal student or a normal person who is looking to do productivity. Productivity on an Android tablet is not exactly the easiest thing to do. But I think this guy here comes really close. So let's talk about build quality. This thing is solid. From the case to the tablet, it's solid. By the time you hold it, you realize it's metal and the desire is as strong as a public servant to not serve you before 8 a.m. Like when I say the magnets are strong, I you literally have to put force to pull this thing apart. You can't just pull it. You feel like it's fighting you to close it. So that's good. So the way the force of the magnet attaches, it makes it extremely sturdy. So whether it's attached in this mode or it's attached like this, the back, it's just going to hold and it's not going to come off. And the magnet that's on top for the pen too, it kind of like grabs the pen. So when you put it, it like, the pen will just kind of hold on to it all by itself like that. And when you try to pull the pen off, it doesn't want to go. So build quality is solid. The screen is a 120 hertz display. I didn't notice this at the start. Well, I didn't know the spec at the start. But when I started using it, I was like, wow, this thing feels so smooth. It feels so buttery. It just feels like, you know, I want to swipe on this. And then when I checked out the specs, I realized it was 120 hz To the specs, the processor is a octa-core max 2.9 gigahertz. I don't know the actual brand of the processor. Um, Xiaomi mostly makes their own chips, so it's possible that they have their own chip inside here. It has 6 gigs of RAM and, and the storage is 128 gigabytes, right? So the first thing I had to do was set it up and install Google Play. Because this is a Chinese device, it comes in Chinese. And there are lots of places you will go and you will just see Chinese. That's okay. Because I had to... Uh, well, that's not okay, but it's kind of okay. So I found out how to get the Play Store. And my first job was to get the Google Play Store. Eventually I got there, all was well, English was found and installing other apps was just like any other Android device because once you have Google Play and your account is synced, you'll be able to download all the apps that you have custom downloaded. Once I got my account set up and I knew what I could do, it was easy to just, you know, try what I need to try. So my next job was to run down the battery to zero so that I could do a battery life test properly from charging all the way to killing it. And I'll just let you know that I've had this thing for two weeks and I really couldn't kill the battery. Because one, I didn't use it every single day for eight hours, but every time I used it, the battery was just like there. So the standby time was just like there. It went from 90 to 95, then 90, like no, it went from 100 to 95, then 90. And then it kind of stuck between 80 and 90 and I just didn't want to die. And I was trying all sorts of things. So I was eventually able to run on the battery the first time to get from 25% down to zero. Took me about four hours just playing a YouTube video constantly. I found one of those videos like, you know, you play the sand on the beach in the background or whatever. And I just ran it down and I got it down to like 3%. So the next thing to do was to charge it. So I got to 75% in one hour. I got it down as dead as a doorknob. Well, 3%, close. That was, that was enough that I needed to. And my test was to see how fast this thing could charge in an hour. Yeah, so not bad, not bad at all considering that it's a 33 watt charger. And it's not even a fast charger with power delivery. It's a USB-A to USB-C charger. So you're not really gonna get the fastest out of that because it doesn't have power delivery. But if you put a 65 watt charger on this, I could imagine that it'll go faster and it could go from zero to 100 in one hour, we hope. So while I was trying to kill the battery, I had the chance to just go through some YouTube videos and I was able to try out the Dolby Surround song that this thing has, right? So there are speakers on the left side, the right side, and then it's more speakers. So there are actually four speaker grills on this, on either side. So you're supposed to get a sort of Surround song when you listen to it. And well, it was okay, it was okay. The sound was full and of course it wouldn't get much bass because well, it's literally, it's a, it's a tablet. But that wasn't too bad. And they have a USB-C to headphone jack because there's only one port on this guy. 
So if you want to use your wired headphones because you didn't want to get the Bluetooth headphones, well, hey, you can do that. So I have to run through the settings to go through and see what's there because of course, you know, the hardware is good. I mean, this is one of the like really best hardware on, on a tablet that I've felt in a long time. But um, software is what really makes a tablet a tablet. So MIUI or MIUI has been known to look like iOS since like about 2012 when it first came out. And Xiaomi doesn't hold back. Like going through the settings, they basically do a hold back and from quick settings to layout to everything, this is the iPad. But that's okay because nobody really cares. But with that said, the settings are very searchable because it's still Android underneath. It just skinned like an iPad. So when you search through your settings to find the things that you want, it's literally there. And the normal things that you would look for will be left just like anything a normal Android tablet has. So you really won't have any problems finding settings, changing things that you want to change, background skins, wallpapers, whatever you have to do. It's all there and they don't really have any issues with it. Now because this is marketed and geared towards students, there is a pen, right? And people who want to do things with productivity, a pen usually comes in very handy. My problem was I connected the pen and it wasn't working. So next thing I wanted to do was check to see okay why was this pen wasn't working? Why was the pen not working? So I took the pen, put it on top, of course I saw the thing starting to charge and the magnet for the pen was just like holding on. It was literally like just holding and it was saying that it was charging. But when I took it off and I tried to write on the screen, it wasn't working. So I felt kind of stupid. Because I couldn't figure out how to get the pen to work, I was like, okay, maybe I need to do a system update. So I saw there was a system update available and I did the system update. So while I was waiting for the system to update, I contemplated calling the company that gave me this review unit. The name of the company is Ent Tech, and they gave me this review unit and they were like, hey, would you be willing to try this out for us for two weeks? And I was like, sure, no problem, because there are a bunch of young entrepreneurs and I love to support young entrepreneurs and people who want to make tech useful and get the supply chain and marketing and whatnot. So check out Ent Tech. All the information about them will be at the end of the video and in the description, right? So, so after the update was complete, I said, let me try the pen again. And I realized I was so stupid, I had to pair it. And I never felt like a dummy before. Actually, I felt like a dummy many times. But this was just another time that I felt like a dummy. So when you attach the pen, you'll get a notification that says that you want to pair it. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll pair it. Then I paired it and voila, the pen works. And boy, this pen works nice. It has some really nice pressure sensitivity. So it kind of, like when you press on the screen, it gets darker, it gets softer, as if you're using a real pencil. And the tip of the pen has a kind of spongy, it's not spongy, but when you press it, you can genuinely feel that it's moving when you press it. So it's not like a hard tip. And when you hit the screen, it's like clack, 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 clack it presses on the screen and it feels like you are actually connecting with some sort of thing and that doesn't feel like a connecting with paper but it's close enough so there seems to be okay palm rejection and taking notes on it shouldn't be a problem because when you rest your hand on it and you're right it's not actually giving you any issues at all so i was glad for that next thing i had to check was using the keyboard using the keyboard is kind of like a joy kind of it's solid and the travel is, it doesn't have like deep, deep, deep travel, but it has this kind of bounce back, right? So the, the travel is about as deep as man's in a la beach. But when you press it, it feels like it, it, it hits back at, you know, like there's a kind of tactile, there's a, a, a pressure or a response or something like that. That resistance makes it feel like you're actually typing and typing gives you a rhythm or a flow because there's a, there's a pushback, there's a rhythm that comes with the keyboard. So the keyboard that comes with the case, really not that bad. It's, it, 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 it's solid. I like it. I really like it. Oops, pen fell. So then there is the camera. And the only people I know that use a camera on a tablet is a granny in a wedding who wants to take pictures of their granddaughter or grandson who's getting married. Nobody uses a camera on a, on a tablet for camera, camera purposes. That being said, it takes good pictures and if you have to submit documents or take pictures to make a PDF, you're good, I guess. So now we have to talk about the standard features, well, the standout features and gimmicks. Now, everybody must have software gimmicks. Apple has software gimmicks, Samsung has software gimmicks, 
Google software gimmicks, Huawei software gimmicks. Because if you don't have gimmicks, what you're really going to sell and what you're really going to market to these people. So here are the top three gimmicks that this tablet could do that may or may not be useful to you. Because, well, <laughs> frankly, you may not care about some of them. So the top three gimmicks are floating windows. Now, we have picture in picture on Android where like you can watch a video and then the video will go to the bottom right hand side. And you have split screen. Split screen is standard on all Android right now. But they have this thing called floating windows and the floating windows allows you to take any, well, their apps because some apps I tried it on, it didn't work. To like, I tried to do it on YouTube to see if I could get a YouTube video to run on the side while I am doing um, work on some other app and it wasn't working. So it works with their apps. And you could get this window to float over the other windows while you do almost anything on the tablet. So that's cool because if you're using their apps or an app that is compatible, you could have something that's running on top and you could see it. So like if you're taking notes about something that you want to look at or you want to reference something while you are typing, you could use split screen. But if you need the full screen to do whatever you're doing and you just need the floating window to show you that little piece, it could be an image or a picture or something. And that's cool. That's cool. For those that care. But I don't think most people will use it because people tend to have a narrow view of productivity and they don't like to get things out of their workflow. So that's up to you, right? The next gimmick is um, second space. Second space is basically you creating a, a second storage space to secure certain data and privacy protection lab. This one I think you could use because there is a um, there is a setting here that you could turn on that will stop apps from accessing your clipboard. Now, if you didn't know your clipboard basically holds the text that you have copied or and you're ready to paste. Now, all apps have access to the clipboard. So when you long press, when you type in, you'll be able to paste something into um, that app. Now, if you turn this off, you are basically saying um, any app that wants to get the things that are in your clipboard, let's say you copy a phone number or something and you do and you want to paste that phone number somewhere, you may not want every app to be able to get that phone number because then they will be able to take your number and use it for whatever. So if you turn that on, access your clipboard, they have to request access with and approximate location if you turn on gps the gps will give you your exact location but if you turn on approximate location you will be able to um depersonalize your location and the app will have to request it so if you turn those two things on you might have some good security features right so as i was saying i didn't really use this every single day for all that i wanted to do but this battery is now on like 65% after being used throughout a two week period ever so often just to do random things and the random things that I was doing they worked at the point in time and every time I was watching the battery indicator it just didn't want to move it was just holding on right there so I'll tell you the total screen on time at the end so in conclusion this tablet is solid and anyone who wants to be productive in any way you really won't have any issues aside from the trip to china uh that you start off with you really won't have won't have any issues once you get the play store installed install the play store install the apps and you should be good so we'll rate it on vibes good vibes build quality definitely screen 120 hertz refresh rate and the song quality pretty good and the keyboard and the pen good vibes Good vibes the sour vibes however the chinese apps and the user interface is apple's little brother but if you could get past the sour vibes the good vibes will be good so this is the xiaomi mi pad 5. now i'll tell you where you could get this and who the video was sponsored by